Hello friends, this video on life processes part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about the holozoic animals because in the holozoic group also we have a variety of animals. It is not only the human beings. Most of the animals which we see around us, they are mostly holozoic. So intake of complex organic matter as food. So they are also further classified into three categories. So now we let us look at the different categories of holozoic animals. The first is herbivores. Herbivores is derived from the word herbs. Herbs means plants. So this term herb means plants. So these are the organisms which feed on plants. Example, cow, goat, horse, rabbit. They are all examples of herbivores. The next is carnivores. That means those which feed on flesh. So examples would be tiger, lion, right? Now there are a large variety of animals which feed on both plants as well as flesh. Can you give me one example of those kind of animals? Right, human beings. We ourselves, we feed on both flesh as well as plants. So they are known as omnivores. That means they feed on both plants and animals. Examples would be humans, crow, pig, rat. So since there were too many holozoic animals, so they were further classified depending upon whether they feed only on plants, only on flesh or on both plants and flesh. So what did we conclude? based on our study on modes of nutrition. We concluded that heterotrophs depend on autotrophs directly or indirectly. So autotrophs are the ones which prepare their own food. So they are self-dependent. They do not depend on anybody for their food. But heterotrophs has to depend on the autotrophs in some way or the other. So they will, they will depend on the autotrophs directly when they directly feed on plants, for example, the herbivores. They will depend on the autotrophs indirectly when they do not feed on the plants directly, but they feed on something which feed on plants. So if you look at the herbivores, they are directly dependent on plants. But if you look at the carnivores, they are indirectly dependent on plants because the carnivores feed on other animals. For example, a lion you can feed on a goat. But the goat in, goat in turn feeds on the plants. So if there are no plants, there will be no goat because goat cannot survive without plants. Now if there are no goat, then carnivores, that is lion, cannot survive. So lion is also dependent on plants, but it is not directly dependent on plants. It is indirectly dependent on plants. So we can say that heterotrophs will always depend on autotrophs, either directly or indirectly. Right? Okay. So let us now talk about the holozoic nutrition. So we spoke about holozoic animals, that means the animals which will take in complex food. So let us talk about the nutrition of holozoic animals. That means we, we first part is over. We already saw that how the animals obtain their food. That part is done. Now we need to see that how the food is taken inside our body and how that food is absorbed and digested by the body. So in case of we'll talk about holozoic nutrition means we will talk about how the complex food which is how the complex food is taken in and it is converted into a simple form in a form which is absorbable by the cells. So any holozoic nutrition will involve a series of steps in order to convert the complex food into a simpler form. So the first would be ingestion. Ingestion means intake of food in complex form. It means whatever the food is, maybe whether it is chow mein or it is a dosa or it is rice, whatever it is, we will take that food in. So that intake of food, that process is known as ingestion. The word ingest in itself tells you it is intake of food. Next is digestion. That is conversion of complex food into simpler form by enzymes. So what are enzymes? Enzymes are the substances which is present inside our body which aggravates the chemical reactions taking place inside our body. Right? Because there are so many chemical reactions which will actually take place inside the body. So these enzymes which act will actually help in those chemical reactions. So they will help to convert the complex food into simpler form. Next is absorption. So now the once the food is con converted into a simpler form, 
so that food can be absorbed by the cells. So the passage of simpler food into blood or lymph is known as absorption. So once that simple, simple food is passed into the blood, what happens? Blood is present everywhere inside the body, right? So it gets absorbed within the body. Assimilation is absorbed food being utilized for energy needed for various activities. So now once the food is absorbed, by the body now once first the food is complex so food has to be converted into simpler form that is done by digestion now that simple food needs to be absorbed by the body so that is done by absorption now the absorbed food needs to be utilized for energy so that it, that that passage of that food into the blood or the lymph so that it reaches each and every organ so that it can be utilized further for energy is known as assimilation right but during this nutrition process, the energy is not created. The food is just assimilated. That means there are assimilation means that there will be some molecules inside the body which will actually contain that food. So some molecules will be enriched with that absorbed food. So then in the next process of respiration, those assimilated molecules will actually produce energy which can be used by the body. Right? So you understand the difference between assimilation and respiration. Correct? Okay. So this is all about holozoic nutrition. So now from the next slide onwards, we, will go, we are going to talk about the nutrition in different types of organisms. So we will start with simpler organisms. Simpler organisms would mean the unicellular organisms which have only one cell. So when there is one cell, there is less complexity. Right? So we will talk about, we will start our discussion with amoeba. Correct? Okay, so before that, let us look at the last step, which is ejection, that is removal of undigested food. So even though a good portion of the food will get digested, there will be some amount of food which will not get digested. So we do not want to keep that undigested food inside our body. We do not want to accumulate that, accumulate that undigested things. So we want to get that, bring that out of our body. So that removal of undigested food is known as Ejection. So don't get confused between ingestion and ejection. Ingestion. In means intake of food. Ejection means removal of food. Right? So ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ejection together would constitute the holozoic nutrition. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.